Hello, and welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Sun. This is the first of two videos on using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution. Okay, so first of all, a little bit of background. I'm not going to go into amazing detail here. This is a bit nuts and bolts, but here we go. Is um, If you have x following a binomial distribution, np, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success, if n is large enough, or if p is close to 0 0.5, then you can approximate that binomial distribution using a normal distribution. Uh, so we call that y to distinguish it from x. So we say it follows a normal distribution np, which is the mean of the normal distribution. np multiplied by 1 minus p, which is the variance of the new normal distribution. Now just talk briefly about why that makes sense. NP um, is the expectation when you've got a binomial distribution. So if n is the number of times it happens, you would multiply that by the probability to find out how many successes you would get. On average, that's how many successes you would expect. So it makes sense that that would be the mean um, of the distribution. The thing we've just got to bear in mind, this NP multiplied by 1 minus P, that's the variance, not the, not the standard deviation. So we've just got to think about that. Um, but I think the best thing to do is just go through an example here. Uh, we've got the random variable x uh, following a binomial distribution, 300, 0 0.5. So there's n, and 0 0.5 is p. Uh, and we're going to use a suitable approximation, which is the normal distribution, um, to find a series of probabilities. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to say is that uh, y is going to follow a normal distribution. Now np is going to be 300 multiplied by 0 0.45 and np multiplied by 1 minus p is going to be 300 multiplied by 0 0.45 multiplied by 0 0.55. So y follows a normal distribution with a mean of 135 and a variance of 74.25. And what I would always recommend that you do in this situation, if you've got the variance, is just write what the standard deviation is, because that's what we're going to need to use in our calculations later. Um, and I wouldn't do anything more flash than just writing that it's the square root of 74.25. Um, but we're going to need that um, shortly. So um, I'm going to draw a quick normal distribution now, just to give a sense of uh, what we're doing. I always like to draw a normal distribution for this. So here's our normal distribution. And we'll just pop a mean line down the middle, and the mean of this distribution is 135. Okay, now we're being asked in part I here for the probability that x is less than or equal to 120. Um, so I'm going to put a line here um, that's below 135, and this is the area that we're going to be working out. But I'm just going to pause for a moment because we've got to do something called a continuity correction. Now, the issue is a binomial distribution is a discrete distribution, which means that x can only be a whole number integer values. We're now approximating it with a normal distribution, which is a continuous distribution. So we've got to allow for that. Now, here's how we do it. The probability that x is less than or equal to 120 we need to think of, if we're using y, of all the numbers that would round to 120 or below. So it's going to be approximately equal to the probability that y is less than 120.5. Because we want any whole numbers from 120 and down, anything up to but not including 120.5, to the nearest whole number would round to 120 or below. So we're going to use that as our continuity correction, and 120.5 is the value that we're going to use for this probability, rather than the 120. Okay. So that's the main thing there, is that continuity correction that we've got to think about. Um, now, um, you should be familiar with how to use the ClassWiz calculator, menu 7, option 2, um, to work out the probability of y being less than uh, 120.5, so I'm not going to go through all that. If you're not sure about it, you need to watch the first video in the previous playlist on the normal distribution. Um, but the probability comes out as 
0 0.0462. Right, part two, x is greater than 148. Um, so I'll do this in a different colour. Let's go purple just for a change. Um, now 148, it's obviously going to be above 135, uh, but I've got to do my continuity correction again to allow for going from a binomial discrete distribution to a normal continuous distribution. So here we go. My probability that x is greater than 148 now what that really means is that x has to be 149 and above because the discrete distribution were only allowed whole numbers. So when we approximate we need to think about anything that's going to round up to 149 or go above it. So it's going to be the probability that y is greater than 148.5 because that ensures that I capture 149 which is the next number after 148 and anything above it. So 148.5 is the value that I'm going to use on my um, normal distribution here. Um, and that probability that y is greater than 148.5, again, just on the calculator, so I'm not going to go through it all, um, it comes out as 0 0.0586. Right, last one. In the interests of the diagram not getting too crowded, uh, I'm going to draw a different normal distribution here. Or another version of the same normal distribution, I should say. So we've still got our mean line in at um, 135. Um, but now I'm being asked for probability that x is greater than or equal to 125, but less than 155. Now, let's have a think about what's going to happen here. So it's going to be approximately equal to the probability of y. Now, I want 125 or above, so anything that rounds to 125 or higher. So I'm going to have to go to 124.5 here, because anything above that's rounding up to 125. So y is greater than that. Y is going to be less than, now, it's got to be less than 155 which means that it's got to be 154 or less. So we want to go less than 154.5, because anything less than 154.5 would round down to 154, and that's the values that we want to include. We don't want to include 155. Uh, so on my normal distribution here, I'll label it with these um, purple lines. I'm going for um, 124.5 here, and 154.5 here, and I want the area in between. And remember, your class was calculator will do that. Menu 7, option 2, normal CD. You can put the lower in as 124.5, the upper in as 154.5, um, and it tells you the answer, which is 0.8767. So there you go, normal approximation of a binomial, and watch out for those continuity corrections. See you in the next video.